Alright, we have just learned the open circuit test. If you remember, the open circuit test was an experiment that we uh, connect the power supply to the low voltage side and then we leave the high voltage side open circuit. Am I right? The open circuit test. We leave this one open circuit. Okay, and then we use the voltmeters, ammeters, and power meters to measure the reading. And then we went through a series of uh, steps to get the value of RC and XM value. Now, we are going to do another experiment, which is something like the opposite of open circuit test, and it's called short circuit test. Short circuit test. Okay, now before we talk about the experiment, let's look at our equivalent circuit again. This is the equivalent circuit, it's called Carlos resistant magnetizing reactants at the low voltage side, the equivalent winding resistance and the equivalent leakage reactants on the high voltage side. Now, open circuit test the experiment was done on the low voltage side. Short circuit test is the opposite. We do the experiment on the high voltage side. So now we will connect, we remove the load, we connect the power supply to the high voltage side and the low voltage side, we short circuit it. And that's how the name comes about, called short circuit test. Okay, so in this here, the uh, circuit diagram here, I put my power supply to the high voltage side, and I short circuit my low voltage. Now short circuit is therefore quite dangerous, isn't it? So therefore we perform the experiment on a very small voltage instead of a high voltage. Okay, so we will put a voltmeter here to measure the voltage. And we put an emitter here to measure the current. And we put a power meters here, power meters here to measure the power. And this time the power measure will be the power it happens in REHP. Am I right? Because the real power only happens in resistor. Okay, what is the equivalent circuit of a high voltage uh, on the short circuit test? Now, if you recall in your basic DC uh, electricity knowledge, a short circuit path current would choose to go through the short circuit path and not go through anything that has impedance. So, in other words, these two disappear. These two disappear. It's because they have been short circuited or they have been bypassed. So, our short circuit test equivalent circuit is just a pure series circuit. So, if I were to draw it on a very traditional way, our equivalent circuit now becomes a power supply with these two items, right? And this is called the short circuit voltage that I apply to the circuit. I put it zero degree, and this is the short emitter's current minus theta because this is still an inductive circuit, and this is R E H V and this is X E H V. So this is the equivalent circuit of the short circuit test. So now let us look at the mathematics and how to derive these two values. Alright, now the three instrument, measuring instrument, we have the power instrument, power meters to measure the power, we have the emitters that measure the short circuit current, we have the voltmeters that measures the voltage. Alright, so we go through the step. The step is quite similar to open circuit test, but we have to be careful. Okay, let's start with BSC equal to BSC. ISC cosine theta. This step is the same as the open circuit test. So you have this value, you have this value, you have this value, you do not have this. So cosine theta can be found. Alright, and inverse it to get the theta. Substitute the theta into the current. Into the current. So you have your ISC minus theta. Don't make it into rectangular form. Okay, because if there's no parallel branch here for us to make use of it. So let's go straight to find the impedance. Right, impedance. Impedance is V over I. Right, which V? This V. Right, so it's VSC 0 degree. I, ISC minus theta. So we have all this value. So our impedance will, will be able to come up with an impedance value with a theta, a polar form. And that is the time that you make them into rectangular form. After finding your impedance in polar form, Make it into rectangular form, and with that, the two I the values of the two items will come up. Yeah. So, see, for example, this is three plus J four O. Then, 
the equivalent winding resistance at a high voltage side equal to 3 ohm, the leakage, uh, the equivalent leakage reactance on the high voltage side is equal to 4 ohms. Okay, do you think you can manage? Okay, let's go through one more time. Uh, a bit complicated, right? Short circuit test. Experiment is done on the high voltage side, and this is the equivalent circuit. Okay, the first thing, V equal to Vi cosine theta. Cosine theta can be found. Theta can be found. Substitute theta into the current with a minus sign. Don't make it into a rectangular number. Leave it as such. Go straight to find the impedance. Alright, go straight to find the impedance, which is equal to Vsc 0 degree divided by Isc minus theta. You have all this value. So with that, your impedance is in polar form. Then make it into rectangular form. And the answers are therefore reviewed. Yeah? Now these two parameters, the values are usually small values. Small values. They are the opposite of the uh, call-loss resistance and magnetizing reactants. The values are usually high or big in number. But these two are small in numbers. Okay? Alright, so then short circuit test. Now the power that is being measured, the power that is being measured here, the PSC, is actually I square R E H V, right? Or we say I H V. Okay? This short circuit test power is actually called copper loss. Why copper loss? Because the winding resistance are come from the winding resistance. I mean the, the winding. The winding is copper wire. Copper wire. Copper wire. Right? So that's why it's called copper loss. Copper loss is I square R. Can you still remember your open circuit test power? The call loss power, the open circuit test power was called the call loss power. Alright, and we use V square over R formula, which is more effective. And that's RCLV and we use VLV, right? If it's RCHV, we use VHV. Okay, so there are three, two types of losses in our transformer that we learned. It's called the copper loss and the call loss. Alright? Now, uh, call loss, we often use the formula that's more effective is V squared over R, and uh, copper loss, more effective formula is I squared R. Okay? Thank you.